is a story of two magpies and their song. For some years, our land was their land. Or should that be the other way around? Every morning, from the branches of a tall gold gum tree, they greeted the day with a song. In the soft tinkling of their singing, they called all the other birds to wake and be doing. Because of their black and white cows, we call them Mr. Monk and Mrs. Monk. Whether the day was sunny or grey, Mr. Monk sat high up in our television aerial and called out his special notes for Mrs. Monk to hear. She responded from the top of the gold tree with the verses of her own song. Then they hunted for food, and for three years, each year, they raised another magpie, clad in black and white, just like their own feathered robes. Then, disaster. The land of tall trees and grass full of insects and food Tempted intruders, a gang of Karawongs came. The Karawong is the magpie's deadly enemy. It is also black and white, but bigger and crueler. Bravely, Mr. and Mrs. Monk fought side by side against the bigger, brawling newcomers. The battle lasted all afternoon, and eventually the Karawongs were beaten off. But Mr. Monk was badly wounded. His leg was broken. For a week he lay in the grass. Mrs. Monk called to him and brought him food. After that terrible week, Mr. Monk could fly again, but he could not hunt for food in the grass. For right or wrong, we humans intervened. We put out small chunks of meat for the crippled magpie. He quickly found them and ate hungrily. Over winter, Mr. Monk recovered as much as he ever would. He caught some food, and Mrs. Monk brought him more. Again, they sang their magpie song. Then... Oddly, Mr. Monk came down to sing on our veranda rail. We put out more meat, and Mrs. Monk came too, but often took some meat away. We understood why when we saw that, once again, the monks had a baby. Despite his crippled leg, Mr. Monk was a father again. He came for some meat, and one morning he brought his squawking baby. Mrs. Monk came as well, but eventually the baby was too much for her patience. Mr. Monk was not a beggar. He paid for his meal with a song. Every morning, 
the magpie sang in the trees. And every afternoon, Mr. Monk came to eat and sing his song for us. So, for more years, more baby magpies were brought up to be adults and set free in the bush to make their own way in the magpie world. They were all taught magpie music, from their oodling song through to their distinctive call, Oi oi, oi oi. The monks stayed with us. One of their babies also came to eat human food. Though not disabled, he lifted one leg, because it must have seemed to him that that was how one informed humans that one was hungry. In time, Mr. Monk's foot shriveled and came off. Yet he continued his duties and his role as spouse and father. He continued to sing with Mrs. Monk, and he continued to come to us and sing for his supper. The year of drought was hard on birds and animals. During that year, we had six orphaned magpie babies in care. They thrived on ground meat and worms. It was also a hard year for the monks. Their baby was killed, probably by currawongs. When we released our orphans, five formed a flock and found their own territory. The sixth was adopted by Mrs. Monk, who taught her how to hunt and how to sing the local magpie song. We called the newcomer baby monk. She became a permanent addition, and so the monks became a threesome, even when the drought broke and the rains came again. All three gathered to sing every morning and evening. But Mr. Monk still comes alone to sit on our rail near the back door and give us his own concert. So, is it just a habit? I like to think that it's his ongoing things, delivered in his very own special way.